EIF, everybody. Hope everyone had a good week. Everyone doing all right? Hello, face. So uh, my thoughts are this on a Friday. Good morning, Hammett, is no one ever worried about going home long risk over the weekend. Hi, Brock. So uh, I'm curious to see if people are going to be willing to go home long risk over the weekend with everything that's going on. So uh, taking a shot in the S&Ps here on the short side, I'm not saying we can't, you know, try and take out this high. And I could be wrong if, you know, we start trading back over 93, but I'm giving the stop some tolerance over 3,000. And uh, the main reason I'm doing it is I'm, I'm, I want to see if we could get a two-week reversal. So I know it's busy, this chart, but a uh, two-week reversal, all you do is count back two candles. That's where the market's memory is. That's where we closed two Fridays ago, 29.88 and a half. I call that an off number. And I think that's right about where we're at right now. So um, I'm speculating, which is what we do, that people may not be as willing or aggressive to go home long risk over the weekend. So we'll see. Obviously, we need closes back under Steve's zone, when I think which was 60 to 55 to get this thing going uh, to the downside. But I think it's worth a shot. And that's my rationale for it. You know, it's been a long time since we've tried to make a new high. This, These were not new highs. They were maybe a double top. So we'll see. Uh, I really think we're at this juncture where we're either just going to blow off and head towards 3,100, which is what I think the majority is saying. And I'm not saying the majority can't be right. But just taking a little uh, speculative shot that by the end of the day, because of some risk aversion that perhaps we fade. Um, this is supporting risk, what's happening in the end right here. Uh, so far we've bounced back from the high we had early in the week up here at 850 to the 78.6 level right here. So again, we'll see this is above the two week off number. In fact, I'm underwater on uh, short. I tried yesterday. The off number in the end is 10809. So let's see. We're right there. So ri the risk uh, instruments uh, are right at two week reversal points. We'll see if they get rejected or close above them. And they close above them. I recommend you not fight it over the weekend. And I wouldn't go home without a lead. And if things go my way during the day, uh, I'm never against taking partial profits. Say like, you know, here, if the market sells off towards 280, taking a piece off and then moving the stop down to BE. I think that's about it. I'm a little surprised at the strength in the Swiss on this candle with the Euro still being kind of firm. And I think that's about, you know, gold. The metals had a very bad week. And we're revisiting this uh, throwover line down here. This time, I don't think we're going to hold it. I think we're going to break through it. And the Dixie almost got to new highs. I, you know, still a decent week in the Dixie. We'll see if the Dixie fades or not. But the third drive is going to come up. Uh, right around par 99.80 if you just look at this high and this high and if we get another shot up in the daily. So guys, you know you only have a couple of days left to do this. And you know how I feel about Friday being a good time to acclimate yourself to the platform and what a great job the guys have done in developing this platform. 
I know you guys have uh, seen me show it to you a million times, but here's a million and one. So you get all the instruments uh, that we play. This was a nice feature that uh, Steve and the developers added, this data flash. And I think what's unique about us, besides we care about you, is all the different types of analysis that you get. Greg and Andre and Blake, Steve and Stell. And then you get all the takeaways down here on all of this. And uh, what a time saver just for where the support and resistance is and bull and bear lines on this. Plus, you know, you get all the active pattern and plays. And I think one of the best features is, you know, hanging out with the community in the chat room where Amanda's providing her live trades. And, uh, you know, you hear Blake talking about some of the guys that have been in there and gals that have been in there uh, that have moved over from when he was with I Wise Trade. So there are, this is not a hobby to a lot of people. So if you're trying to bring up your game, the best way to do it, and Blake's there all the time, you could always just ask Blake, he's going to be sharing what he's doing. So if you want to know what Blake and some of the other members are doing in the markets during the day after face, that's your way for doing it is to have access to our chat room. And I think it's a great investment in your future to have a, a chance to have a better fall trading season because you have all of this at your fingertips, you know, every once in a while. And I'm not totally dependent on it, but I look at it a lot because say, for example, you know, like uh, the end right now, I'm, I'm underwater. I wonder, I could go, well, I wonder what uh, Greg and Andre see here, right? So I could always just pull it out. This is macro. Let's see where Greg is at on the end. So he still, it looks like he still has it heading higher. I, you know, and I'll tell you what, you know what doesn't show up in your account? Is there are many times I put on a trade and then I go look instead of looking before I put on a trade that uh, it can, yeah, it looks like he's looking for maybe what we have here or new highs up here, 890. Okay. So uh, I wish I'd looked at this earlier uh, last night before I, I did this. Anyway, so uh, you have all of this at your fingertips and maybe it'll save you from making some bad trades. John says the best one is Amanda, but they are all great. So, you know, it doesn't show up on your bottom line if you um, avoid a bad trade, but I'm telling you, it's just as important as a winning trade, even though it doesn't show up in your balance. And this could be, you know, how I talk about intelligence gathering when I bring in guests. Uh, this is a great place for intelligence gathering because you have all these different views. Let's see what Andre's thinking about the end here. This was the 23rd, the last time this was. So Andre's looking for right around my target, 640. So we'll see if, you know, this Dale, 50. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. That's uh, an old that, one. That's, that, that's, that's the most recent one, the 12 hours time frame chart. The market has already uh, nailed the 38% the retracement and bounced it. But I will try. I, I will be the, here today. Uh, oh, doing some of those charts. So I will. I will also cover that. That yen. Uh, okay. All yeah. right. Great. Great, Andre. Thank you for 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 interjecting. Uh, you know, I'm always. Uh, I learn from you and get ideas from you all the time. And you don't always come into face. I mean, maybe you're here once a week. Sometimes weeks go by, and you know, if uh, if you weren't a contributor. I wouldn't know what you were thinking, so uh, yeah. I appreciate it. And uh, you, just... I, I, I saw your motivation for being mm -hmm. a great analyst and trader. 
your family, the pictures of you and your oh, family. Oh, yes, for sure, for sure. So, for sure. you know, those, that's what those, you train those for. Those surroundings are, are very important for, yeah. for, for us. Also. Yeah, because it's going to be expensive to send your daughter to college. You better start getting hot, <laughs> man. Yeah, and it is. <laughs> it still is, but, <laughs> but it will reward me for, for sure, and, and it, it will reward her for sure uh, yeah. in the future. So yeah. I pay a lot to, to for, for my daughter education. But yeah. with a specific objective, so yeah, I, I, will, I believe. It's yeah, always. it's called love. Not only, but <laughs> oh yeah, all right. Well, but, that's but if if we consider love as as a uh, an whole, uh, I, I I believe it's a whole. It's a the only reason yeah. we're here, man. Yeah, for sure. In my for sure. extremely accurate and humble opinion. Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, I wonder if uh, Mr. Love is here, uh, Blake Morrow. Good morning. Good morning, buddy. TGIF. Oh man, four o'clock, huh? Oh, huh? you. Oh, you don't. You, you still have that extra hour, don't you? Oh, I'm. I'm with you. No, no, no. Oh. Uh, we don't. I don't. We don't get the time change here until uh, November. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, I still have another month or so. Oh, well, um, you're a young guy. You can. Handle it. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How you doing? Good, good. And, uh, I, you know, I was just joking around yesterday. I was, you know, put out a tweet about Stell being a great macro trader. And I don't know, I was in a goofy mood. And I put out a tweet saying that uh, you were the handsomest guy at Forex Analytics and Gallo's, uh Capital. And women follow you. <laughs> but I but I deleted it. <laughs> I didn't see that. No, yeah, I, well, maybe Blake's not in the mood. I think I'll just delete it. But uh, anyway, that was my tweet. Uh, all right. <laughs> well, okay, okay. Well, I think that's a the, that's a that's a bit of a lie. But uh, but thank well, you. Well, you could lie on Twitter. You know, I people guess people do. You know, that's... yeah, yeah, definitely people do. <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, they bend they bendy the truth a little bit. How was your uh, week? Uh, actually it turned around nicely. I had a, you know, I had a rough, um, it's funny. Let, let me, let me give you guys kind of the, uh, the rundown of the last couple of weeks. So, uh, th this month it started off really good. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of trading psychology. I want, I want you guys to understand, um, this. So I started, I started, and this is, this is, this is of course, par for the course. So, I go, uh, you guys know, I went to my office in Greenwich, Connecticut, uh, this week. And so, um, my month started off and this is, you guys are going to laugh and some of you will be able to relate to this. I start. I started off my month. Great. I, uh, I was up some pretty good money and like I was on pace to match my last month's P and L. Uh, it started off great. The, the first first week, week and a half was just awesome. I was rocking it out. And then all of a sudden, um, midweek uh, of the second week, it, things started to turn. Um, you know, I, I gave back some profits. I had a string of losses. And, uh, and then uh, I get contacted by the office like, hey, we'd, we'd like you to come in. We have, you know, another trader coming in from Chicago. Uh, which you haven't met. We, we all want to get together and, you know, meet and talk about our goals and uh, talk about your trading and, you know, and, and, you know, just meet up, you know, we, we do this a couple times a year uh, in person, you know, and, and I said, Oh, oh and I started thinking, Oh crap, my month, my month went from really good to now it's break even. I'm like, okay, I'm now I have to, book my trip i'm going to i just found out you know and i'm like okay i'm going to 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 to, to uh the east coast um going to the east coast here in the in the next uh in the next week and a half so i need to i hold on my speaker's a little loud here so i so i'm like okay well now i have to i have to turn my my month back into positive i need to i need now listen to me i need to go from having a great month so now I'm back to pretty much flat after a string of losses and I need to turn it around and get back to positive to, you know, cause, cause of course, when I go meet my, the, you know, the principals of the firm, I want to, I want to show them that I've done great. And uh, guess what happened? Yeah. My month turned sour. I w w had like a, a good week. The key word like, is uh, need. 
Yeah, yeah. Anytime I mean, you I, need I, to perform, you exactly, know what I mean? exactly. Yeah. And so, of course, I go to the office uh, last week with my tail between my legs because you know it's just, of course, it's 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 um you know it's it's par for the course. It's like you know I. I'm like grinding lower and, you know, I get to the office and I'm meeting with the principals and my, you know, month is now negative. And, uh, they're like, what happened? You know, and I, they, they don't really, I, I say they don't care. They, they, they worry more about my process, not my, um, not, not my day to day or week to week. It's more of my process of how I, uh, of how I make money. Um, one of the, one of the things that, um, that that I'll, I'll i'll tell you now from experience the anybody who you trade for um really cares about how you recover after having some losses I, and i've watched them now for years i've watched traders come and go and and the the hallmark for traders that can't make it is really the ones that can't recover um, you know, when you have some losses and you turn, you know, you turn around and you go, Hey, I, you know, I, I, I pick my stuff up and I get right back on the horse and, you know, and recover. And yeah, that's, that's the, uh, that's the, those are the qualities that anybody who's looking for a trader is going to be looking for. And, um, you know, I, I actually had a great week. I had, I, I you know, um, strung together some great ideas uh, for those of you that don't know i was uh you know short the aussie new zealand uh earlier this week i told everybody when i was in i was actually in connecticut uh in the chat rooms told everybody i'm shorting the the aussie aussie new zealand around 108 uh, my cost average ended up being 107.80 i had a huge chunk of it and uh and i covered it yesterday at 107.20 uh so that was good or 10718 or something like that. And um and you know I started building a position in the New Zealand uh yen last night on the long side. I got hit on a bid at uh 6760 pretty good piece and I'm looking to actually um you know uh get even more of that. Now uh I got asked this question um from from one of our traders uh this morning Chi uh he he is like why why the New Zealand yen? And the reason for that is really simple. First of all, the Kiwi is actually starting to outperform the Aussie. Uh, the yen, uh, the dollar yen, or you know, the yen pairs in general look pretty well bid. And as we are up near, you know, these highs, and the risk is starting to run that uh, there's going to be a China-U.S. trade deal here in the next couple of weeks. Whether it's a ceasefire, whether it's a you know a, a temporary deal, whether it's a full-on deal, I don't know. I think the market's already pretty much priced for some sort of ceasefire or, you know, backing off from both sides. Um, but I will say this, that uh, the, the risk of a deal getting done is probably much higher now. And the reason why I say that is because uh, President Trump is now facing um, impeachment. Now, you, you know, and I, and I think I said this yesterday, impeachment's not going to go anywhere. Um, it's not, it, 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 it's more of, you know, the formal process of going through an impeachment that is really going to hurt his reelection bid. Um, he's not going to be impeached in my opinion. And maybe he will be, but I, 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 I doubt he is. Um, what I'm, what he's probably more worried about is how it's affecting or going to affect uh, his, um, uh, you know, the, the outlook for him in general. So for him, I think it's going to be now more than ever. He's wanting to put together a, a China-U.S. trade deal um, going into this uh, this this next year. He's going to want to have something in place where he can say, "Look, what I did," and. And um, so I think that's the risk. Now, uh, you, you guys know, as far as I'm concerned, as, as soon as there's a China-U.S. trade deal announced, I'm, I'm actually looking to fade risk, whether it's a day or two or a week later, I'm, I'm looking to fade risk. But going into it, uh, I want to be long. And like I said, um, the Kiwis have started now outperform the Aussie. Uh, we had some very positive comments from, uh, from uh, Orr uh, a couple of days ago. 
and uh, a positive outcome between the China and the U.S. will put the Aussie, or excuse me, the New Zealand uh, yen probably closer to 70 yen versus where it's at right now at 68. So I think that, uh, you know, two, two, 300 pip rally is not out of the question here. And technically, as long as we hold this trend line, roughly, um, I want to be long. So that's the reason why I'm long the New Zealand yen or building a position and I'm not done. I want to, I want to actually, um, you know, uh, build a little bit bigger position than I have right now. But, um, Anyway, that's just kind of the, my thoughts on the New Zealand yen. And I thought I'd tell you a little story about what I did personally. And for I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys at home can relate. You can think, th think through the thought process of that. I mean, here you are, you know, you're down. Uh, you're, you're, you're down money going into your, you know, going and face the, I had to go face the music and it's, you know, with my tail between my legs, you know, I, I turned what w was looking to be a very promising month into a, you know, negative month. Um, I've turned it around again, but, but that's, that was, that was what happened to me. And that was coming off like the best, best month of the year that I had, uh, this, this whole year was last month, which is surprising for me for August, but, um, uh, you know, the, and it, it, it really, you know, I was, uh, I, I was meeting with another trader, uh, and I don't want to tell you what oil company he traded for. Um, but he came from Chicago and, uh, and, and him and I are roughly the same age. we got kids around the same age and, uh, he's a great guy. And, uh, and, and, and he's a new addition to, to our, our firm, um, which, you know, we don't bring on people very often. This is the first person I've seen in a year and a half, maybe almost two years. So, uh, and, he, and he's a rock star kind of guy, very macro oriented. And, um, and, and we were just talking about how, you know, trading is really, it's not so much the markets. I mean, the markets have something to play in it, in it but it's really your, your, uh, you're, it's it's you against yourself and it very much was this week was a perfect or the last couple of weeks was a perfect example of that for me was uh, you know I made a lot of um, mistakes and a lot of errors as a trader two week, for the last two weeks not this week so much but the previous two weeks I made a lot of really big mistakes on, on my part. And, uh, and, 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 it, and, you know, taking a step back and weeding through all the, 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 the trades that I did, it was more of my process and what I was doing and, you know, chasing, getting caught in a FOMO and, you know, that, that type of thing. And in a market that just isn't conducive to, uh, to, to that type of behavior as a trader. So, uh, all very interesting stuff, I'm sure. And I may have put some of you to sleep, uh, already, but uh, I'm glad that, that I didn't if I did not. Uh, a couple things I wanted to talk about today uh, really quick before I turn it over to Stelios and Steve. Uh, you look at the euro dollar, the euro dollar is doing pretty much what I expected. I, I was hoping for a little bit of a move below 109 um, for, for, for a rally and I'm not, I'm not bullish and I'm not long. I didn't even have a bid out last night because, you know, the last thing, the last thing you want to happen is, you know, especially trading the size that I, you know, I trade, I, you know, I didn't want to have a bid at 109 or 108, you know, 90. And then, you know, the thing dropped, like, you know, just going to utter free fall to, to the 78% retracement and drop a hundred pips and shake out everybody and do one of those. Cause I could, you know, I could, I could wake up with a, you know, Seventy, eighty thousand dollar loss doing stupid stuff like that. So I, I, I chose not to, um, to do that just in case there was some sort of throw over. And uh, so what I, you know, did is just kind of uh, uh, standing aside. But the whole reason why prudence uh, over valor, Blake. Yeah, in this. How case, long did it take you to learn that? Hold, hold on, really quick. Okay, sure. Go ahead. Hold Your on. dog wants you to cook him breakfast. Y yeah, I mean that's it's it's five. 30 in the morning in my is dogs. that him pushing his bowl around no that's oh. probably i don't know what it is but uh but All anyway right. um <laughs> damn dogs it's like it's like dude it's 5 30 in the morning you know the whole house is asleep um but there was a lot of people yesterday looking at the euro as a triple bottom and uh there, there you know there's this yeah. you know there was the 109.20 109.20 109.20 
And a lot of people tried to trade that on the long side yesterday. And I, and, and I, and I was like, Oh, they're going to get stopped out. And, you know, I think a lot of them did. I think a lot of them got shook out when we dropped below 109.20 in Asia. You saw it actually, if you were in Asia trade, uh, I happened to be just, you know, in front of my computer, just watching it. And then we slid right through here. And that was in Asia last night. We slid right, you know, to 109.05. And that's when I retweeted my chart of the day. And I said, Hey, reread this really quick because it looked like it was just stopping out everybody that, that got long, you know, earlier in the session over here, they just all got stopped out. And then, you know, you know, we're bouncing around, but I think to, for the, for the Euro dollar to turn, uh, semi quasi bullish, I guess would be, you know, move above 109, 70. And if we, we, we broke above 109, 70, I think you could see some buying back up towards one, you know, 110, 110, 20, whatever. Uh, I don't, I doubt that's going to happen today. I don't think today is going to be the, the day that we see that. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we just close near our lows uh, today as we head into the weekend and, you know, people, people start to question things. So anyway, um, but that's all I wanted to say about the Euro. I know we have data coming out here uh, momentarily. Uh, if you look at the data flash, we have PCE, uh, durable goods, so we have some uh, some U.S. Uh, inflation data coming out, which is going to be fairly important. I want to turn it over to my colleague Stephen Stelios, uh, so they can uh, they can cover the news for you guys. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Very well. Good, very morning, well thank you. good morning, Steve. I, I have a tune for you to play this weekend by Green Day, Blake. Wake me up when September ends. Yeah. That's oh, song. yes. That is a great song. Yeah. Fantastic <laughs> song, actually. Well, guys, I, I don't know if you heard my story about me heading to the office, but I'm sure some of you could relate to that, whether it's reporting back to your wife or spouse that how well you've done or, you know, whether it's to your, your firm uh, as, uh, as you have to face the music. I'm, I'm sure some of you guys can relate to that. I hope I'm doing okay, boss. <laughs> Thank you, <Blake. laughs> all right guys well you're, not, you're fine <laughs> um, hey, 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 hey guys just uh really quick before i let you go remember this is the very last month that or a very last month very last weekend you can take advantage of the pricing um for the forex analytics special offer so if you guys have not taken advantage of the offer this is it this weekend, this is it. Until then, I mean, after that, you're stuck. Uh, you and we don't, we don't make. There's no if and or buts. We don't. TLMC, make, too late market close. We don't, we don't, we don't sit there and go, oh, sorry, you missed it by a day. Yeah, we'll give you that special pricing. No, you're just gonna pay what you pay. So, take advantage of it this weekend. It's it's important um, to be involved. And I like if you were in the chat room last night, I I, I jumped in during Asian trade when I got. Uh, limited into my New Zealand yen at 67.70. I'm like, hey guys, I just I just bought it on a dip, and it dropped to 67 or 67 like 65, and then ripped up from there. It's like it, you know there are opportunities, and if you're not going to know about them if you're not part of our community, and you're not in our chat rooms, so take advantage of our pricing. All right, that's all I'm going to say about that. You guys have a great one, TGIF. Uh, have a wonderful Friday. Thanks everybody for being here. I'll see you on the week ahead video. Uh, talk to you soon. Have a great weekend, Blake. Thanks. Thanks you Blake. Have a great weekend, Blake. Thanks. Hello, okay. Steliosis. Is hey, hey, Dale, I didn't actually <laughs> see your tweet. Thank you. I saw it just when you mentioned it. Uh, thanks oh, yeah. That, man. It, coming yeah, from you means, it means a lot to me. Shy Girl agreed with me 100%. Yeah. Said you're I, awesome. I like Tracy a lot. Yeah, um, I do too. Okay, so we have numbers in about 50 seconds. Uh, probably time to just mention, I have a couple of things to say, but I'll just say one. We had... Um, we had some uh, business climate uh, data out of Europe. It's not that important, but um, it did, it is. Uh, they did come in negative. They're at like six-year lows. So the, the conditions are definitely not looking good, and sentiment is worsening. That's um, that's definitely a trend. And remember, Germany is uh, the driving force to the downside this time. It usually is the uh, the locomotive of the uh, Eurozone, but this time it's really- oh, Hold on, I think I put my magnifying glasses on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we'll talk if about you can't read that, please don't drive. Yeah, we'll talk about the UK after the numbers. So let's see what this brings. So can you make it smaller, Steve? 
No, the uh, senior citizens. Uh, ones. Yeah, that's the important ones. It's okay. Senior so, citizen data flash. So let's see. <laughs> Use durable PC, goods. Better PC. Yeah, worse personal income as expected. Use um, durable, durable good order double than expected. Use consumption lower than expected. Uh, Person is spending lower than expected. I think it's a mixed bag. I think uh, it is not it that is a mixed much. Bag, indeed. There's it not is. that much happening. Papa's got um, a brand new bag. Yeah. <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to talk about very briefly is the pound is seeing some weakness today. And this was mainly on the back of uh, Michael Saunders, who's uh, one of the nine Bank of England uh, MPC members, who said that we may need rate cuts even with a Brexit deal. Uh, now, I have to remind everybody, because these guys, they, they just get on my nerves sometimes. I have to remind you, this guy... Sometimes? Is, really? Yeah, Sa <laughs> Saunders, a little while back, was voting for rate hikes when unemployment was higher, GDP was lower, um, wage growth was much lower, and inflation was only marginally higher than it is today. So you tell me what's changed and why with the Brexit deal, which would release a lot of uncertainty in a good way, um, would need cuts. I have no clue. I don't. Anybody who knows, please tell me. But this is the the main reason why the, the pound is uh, dropping today. Uh, the because only reason, as you understand, Stelio, that there is uh, a shift in uh, rhetoric is uh, the um, change, the obvious change in uh, the monetary path that the Fed is taking. And let's be honest, the US leads the rest of the world having to do with monetary policy, right? I mean, nobody wants to have their currencies, uh, currencies ended, ending up strengthening. Um, so well, we can't talk about strengthening for the pound, right? It's dropped no, like 15%. That's true. I'm not advocating that he's right, as you know. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know very well my personal opinion. My personal opinion is that rates are completely unrealistic. They are being artificially suppressed so that debt repayment can, uh, can be doable. Um, but as we know, very, very low rates, extreme rates create all the phenomenon we've had during the past couple of decades, which means that, you know, they keep them very low to solve a problem in the short term. But in, in the long term, they make, they're making all the problems bigger. Yeah, yeah they're kicking it's the just, can. Yeah, it's exactly. just, yeah, exactly. Kicking the can down the road and let yeah. the next, uh, Fed govern, uh, the, 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 um, the next Fed, um, uh, chairman, the next president, the next you name it, solve the problem if it blows up in, in their watch. As simple yeah, yeah. as that. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, so that's uh, that's all I had to say. I mean, the, otherwise, there's not much happening. Actually, Trump is... Uh, what's happening? There's, there's been some headlines about Iran. Uh, US... The Iranian, Iranian president said that the US offered to remove all sanctions on Iran in ex exchange for talks. So Trump might be wanting to make some kind of deal somewhere yeah um, i'm sure i'm, I'm sure yeah. he you know he wants to change the agenda as yeah. fast as possible to to other stuff uh, yeah instead of you know having you know discussions about impeachment and everything else yes yes good timing um yeah that's it i think we have um we're gonna have uh andre today so yes, if you want to go gonna be andre is gonna be with us um yeah. i joined quite late so uh Stelios, i don't know if you if you can tell me if we have any questions uh, that I can very quickly address, and then I'm going to give all the time to uh, to Andre, uh, because you know I can see questions before I came. I came three twenty one on the webinar, so I can see questions prior to that. There so weren't actually know. any. There weren't actually any questions. Just a few comments, but uh, no no particular questions. So you can take it from here. Okay. Okay. Perfect, mate. So um, since you talked about the pound stelio. Uh, keep in mind that this little inverted head, uh, sorry, head and shoulders formation, not an inverted head and shoulders formation on the four hour chart, we've come rather close to its completion. Uh, that would be at 122.50. Um, so, uh, you know, just a few more pips to the downside, and we're, we're going to have completed this uh, formation. So, yeah, we're seeing some weakness, and, you know, we know that we triggered. Um, you know, this head and shoulders, and yeah, it's it's moving according to that. Um, now, having to do with uh, developments, the only, not much has changed since yesterday. The two things that are worth noticing, and then I'm going to pass it to Andre, is one, crude is currently testing major 
major support area. You can see it here. Confluence of this broken descending trend line resistance now acting as support or anyhow question mark. Is it going to act as support? We can find out. And the 61.8% FIB of that last move higher, both of them passing from 55-40 roughly. So, you know, this is a key area um, for us to find out um, if, uh, you know, we, we can get some type of a bounce from here or crude is headed much lower. If you want to add something to the mix, we can also draw this ascending trend line support. There you go. And as you see, we also have this ascending trend line support passing from the same area. So triple confluence supports. If you really like crude, this is the place you're buying it because you know you have a very appealing risk reward ratio. But if we close below that area on a daily, uh, on the daily, and if it happens today, of course, that's also going to be a daily, uh, a weekly uh, close. Uh, then I'm afraid that you know there are very, very high chances that crude is, is moving much lower than that. So key area here for crude, and at the same time, key area for two pairs that are almost perfectly inversely correlated: Euro USD finding support at the quadruple confluence of supports at one zero ninety two. At the same exact time. The DXY finding resistance. I hate magic mouse. Finding resistance at the same ascending same channel line, we've been man. talking about I and previous time. Purple, maybe, but might be, maybe might be. Maybe. But no. for the time being, we're finding resistance again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from the same channel resistance, this channel dates back to December of last year, so it's quite. Quite a proven. Uh, Look how weak the U.S. dollar Swiss is compared to the dollar index. I mean, you know, we're pressing the highs, those highs up there, and look how far away the Swiss is from where. Yeah, that's the that's Dixie because was. that's because of the move we have had. Here it is: the U.S. the Swiss is still trading in the middle. I actually uh, made this intraday update when we were testing support. Yeah. Saying that you know this is a key level and we we indeed bounce from there, still looks to me like the USD Swiss can eventually end up breaking the downside. Yeah. Uh, but the main reason of this big divergence that you're mentioning, um, Dale, is yeah. the impressive way in which that unfolding rebound in the Euro Swiss yeah. happened. So you know we 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 got some hopes that Euro Swiss might be putting in some type of a recovery and then. That was it. It failed yeah. from that resistance area and uh, it moved, you know, quite significantly lower. I mean, it's 150 pips, but let's be honest, 150 pips for a pair that is moving, uh, you know, with the speed that Euro, Euro Swiss is moving within a few days is quite a significant move. I mean, in comparison to the average true range, the ADR that most of you know, it's, Great point. it's, it's quite a big move. Okay. So um, you're pretty no, good, man. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, thank you. I, you make Not as laugh. good as Stell. I mean, I didn't tweet that you're the best candlestick guy first, I've ever first, met. First, first of all, uh, first of all, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, nobody wears nobody wears a pink bikini better than Stell. So I can <laughs> I can attest to that. I can't <laughs> unremember that image now. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, Euro Swiss. By the way, since we mentioned it, back on horizontal support. So uh, keep an eye here. If we fail from here, uh, I'm pretty sure that we're headed lower. This was anyhow a very, very, very weak recovery. Now, having to do with the rest, not really much has changed since yesterday, but it is worth uh, perhaps silver. Silver remains uh, you know, under pressure, but give me a second because I opened that on the wrong chart. There it is. So silver, under pressure again, perhaps one more leg lower that we were initially looking for. We said that alternatively it might, you know, uh, consolidate horizontally. But don't forget that the, our main case scenario was one more wave lower. That would imply if we extend this, and then I'm going to pass it to Andre. That would would imply a fib extension for equality. Would imply from here to there and back there. That would imply a move to 16 and a half, uh, coincidentally or not. 
coincidentally or not, 16 and a half would also imply more or less a retest of this broken descending trend line resistance that might act as support if we retest it, okay? So um, the rest more or less have remained the same, but I'm pretty sure that <clears throat> you want to hear what Andre has to uh, say because Andre, through harmonics, he, he has a, you know, a different, a longer term view of the swings that the market produces. So uh, Andre, let me make sure that you are. Uh, yes, I am. Hello. There you are. Steve. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, you know how to take the screen from me, right? Uh, yes, I know. Okay, perfect. Coach, by the way, do we have an interview today? To know if Andre has 20 minutes or even more. It's all Andre's. It's, it's all, all Andre's. Okay. Yeah, so 20 Andre... minutes, I believe it's, it's enough. Okay, yeah, thank anyhow, you. Anyhow, you, you, mo- you have more if needed since there is okay. no, no interview. Cool. So go cool. ahead and start with, you know, the, your, like, you know, okay. the, the setups with which you have more conviction and take it from mm-hmm. there. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, uh, so I, I want to wish everybody a nice weekend. Um, I'm going to take, you know, opportunity of that to, to jump on um, on a meeting that they're waiting for me. So have a wonderful weekend. Don't don't forget to take advantage of the offer last weekend that the offer is up. Thank you, Coach, for having You're us welcome, Steve. during the week. And everybody enjoy, Andre. Okay, have a great weekend, Steve. And you Stella, too. if you're still here. And Andre. No, he's not. Okay. Thank you. To Steve. Take it away. Take it away, Picasso. Hey. Let's let's try to, uh, just taking the, the, the metals um, through through Steve's opinion and um, heads and shoulders formation. I, I believe it's it's clear for everyone. I published this this eventual formation before uh, a potential bounce from the bottom, printing the the, the the right shoulder. So obviously, it's a pattern that requires a breakout of the previous lows. Um, if that happens, we may see eventually, well, we have the default projection for the pattern. We never know if the pattern will reach those targets, but we have the default target for, for the pattern at 14.17. So this is a 200% Fibonacci extension. Um, and obviously that, that um, the breakout of this daily fractal may, may trigger that, um, well, that momentum. Uh, at this point, we are also threatening the previous structure support level in fractals, and we have this previous structure resistance now acting as a potential support level, as a pressure element. Obviously, that may also uh, break out or recover, recovering that, that trend line again as a resistance uh, may trigger downside momentum and eventually a breakout of that, that major head and shoulders. Will, will happen from, from there. Um, one, one thing that I noticed uh, that, well, and I, and I shared that among our community, um, was the time between the formation of the left shoulder, the head, and, and the period of the, cons- of the consolidation um, between those, those the head, well, between the left, the head, and the, the right shoulder let, uh, later, or the breakout of this previous consolidation process below, if you can see, after 47 bars and actually nine days and 20 hours, the market has violated this, this structure. And not because we can take an edge from these situations, but it, it, it's always interesting to, to, to see those, those synchronizations, specifically uh, when we are talking about um, an edge and shoulders formation, when we tend to search for a symmetrical, let's say, in time, and 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 in price a symmetrical behavior between the left and the right shoulder so uh, i will not uh, ignore that that possibility if the market decides to trade below that the daily fractal at 1483 um, and just taking the, the words from from steve um, for metals now uh, on cable uh, we are also this is a four hours time frame chart let me show you, first of all, the major picture of a bigger picture here. So this was the bullish shark pattern, as I mentioned before. I, I believe I was here already talking about this pattern. Forged the 224 extension, the second uh, bottom, um, breaking uh, 
trading a few points below the previous one. So we have kind of a double bottom there, uh, a breakout of the previous resistance, validating it, the, the double bottom. Um, and we are now facing the 38% retracement. Uh, so the market has rejected the 38% retracement. As I published before, um, uh, the market has also uh, formed the 168 extension, the bearish shark pattern, which forms or which gives sequence to the 5.0 pattern. And where should the market find support? at 50% retracement, obviously. So that being said, we are now facing, we are seeing cable um, at this point, rejecting the 50% Fibonacci retracement. And this is also, uh, and because Steve was mentioning the, 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 pre, the projection for the, um, the heads and shoulders. Well, I have, uh, uh, my, my projection is a little, little bit different. I, I actually believe the market has already uh, achieved the default projection at 220, um, the 200% Fibonacci extension. I use, as I mentioned before, I use the body of the structure to, and I, I search for the 200% Fibonacci extension from, from this measurement. So from, from that swing, uh, basically, as the rule says, uh, say, uh, suggests an extension or a projection similar from the head to the next zone. So by default, I use the body of the structure to project the pattern, the default target. Um, it has been working quite well recently. It doesn't mean that it will work every, every time we, we face a pattern on the, or we see a breakout of the pattern. But in my opinion, we see, uh, I'm seeing cable now facing support at 50% Fibonacci oversold. Um, well, 200 moving average also uh, supporting <coughs> the price there and the previous structure resistance. So I will not ignore, uh, well, I will not ignore, actually the market is reacting well from there. So, but this completes the 5-0 sequence. Um, which is a bullish pattern uh, based on the bearish shark. So we have a bearish shark pattern, a false breakout below the previous low, extended later at 168 extension, 50% Fibonacci retracement, and support should trigger more bullish momentum. Uh, oversold also um, triggering that, that momentum from there. Obviously, we have structure from above for those who trade based on a breakout of of the structure, um, eventually the market will retest that structure, a bounce retesting this, this trend line um, is a possibility. On euro versus dollar, I shared also the potential for, you know, on a higher time frame, a 12 hour time frame event, I believe, I shared the possibility for a breakout below these, these the body of this structure again. Um, I was looking into this into this price action in, uh, as a potential um, edge and shoulders again, retesting this this descending channel. And the market has actually the market has violated the structure, the previous daily support, um, but it has failed the, at least until now. It has failed the default projection for 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 one kind of an orthodox uh, or not so common uh, edge and shoulder formation. So note that the market is already violated, has already violated the, the double bottom uh, format previously. So at this point, nothing assures me the market will bounce from, from this or will just retest the previous structure and then keep falling or even, even lower. Um, let's wait and see. At this point, to turn into a bullish, uh, I believe I, I need to see the market trading above at least this 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 descending um, this descending trend line resistance. So I believe if the market starts to trade above, and if if the market remains above that trend line, it it will trigger more bullish momentum. Obviously, uh, considering the the previous bottom and the potential false breakout below these lows below the previous lows, obviously for those who are trying to go long, then let me go into a 
two hours time frame chart because uh, almost for sure we are facing something here in terms of in terms of patterns let me just measure the, this is a 50 168 extension so let me just extend. good stuff buddy let me just extend those fibs here um, on the 168 fly. extension yeah 168 extension eventually the market has found some support it's a false breakout eventually nice oversold conditions actually some bullish no bullish divergence between previous low uh, and the most recent one so we have also some yeah, I mean, the market is reacting well from there so we have kind of a pattern there at 168 extension um well, let's see how the market reacts from there. One chart that I want to 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 cover is actually we will get there, but it's dollar versus yen, Dale, because you you, you mentioned it before, and because and I I interrupted you, and I'm sorry for that because we have also this bearish cipher pattern printed at 78% retracement exactly at the same moment that we that I interrupted you, the market has nailed the 78% Fibonacci retracement so we have a perfect cipher pattern so i i will i need i will need to i need to draw all those all my charts again but this is what we have at this point on on dollar versus yen we have the bullish shark pattern printed below a 224 extension double bottom broken neck triggered more bullish momentum the market has approached the 168 extension failed the 168 extensions just by a few points and it has started to fall from there. The market has nailed again the 38% FIB. Let me just adjust this Fibonacci to the most recent highs here. The market has failed just by a few points, the 38% retracement. Um, and it has started to, to uh, and it has bounced from, from the, those levels. This is also the 127 extension. Let me show this on a two hours time frame chart. This is the 127 extension from this first swing low. We bounce 127 extension, 78% Fibonacci, bearish cipher pattern printed. The fault target for that pattern is just right here. So we don't expect that pattern to produce a, a, a movement of this magnitude so we expect a specific we have default targets for those patterns but that can trigger eventually more bearish more more bearish momentum for the pair we don't we, we never know about that but that for those eventually for those who are trying to short a market based on a on a higher time frame event um this can be the, the moment to, to to trigger your shorts best the best reward risk reward possible that you can find inside of the market beside the bearish bat pattern, which completes 88% Fibonacci and which will provide you a, a more interesting or more friendly risk reward approach for those who try to short those, those advanced patterns. The cipher, it's printed at 78% retracement, but is, we still need to respect those highs. So let me try to go again to the four hour time frame chart and show you what may happen um, also if the market decides to break above. So, and because that the, we, we can be wrong and, and the market will fail this, this fall. Um, and what can happen if the market decides to trade higher? So actually we are now threatening these major trend line resistance from this channel. So we are, the market is, is starting to produce some, um, some patterns here moving into a sideways moving process and, and the cipher it's it's just one of those patterns eventually uh, uh, an extended um, moment of extended uh, price behavior inside a specific range let's say be between the daily fractal and the most recent daily support let's say um it will it will form other events and other patterns inside those consolidation process that's that's the place where we tend to search for and we tend to, 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 to identify those advanced patterns, those harmonic patterns. Um, and I will not 
ignore that possibility to stay inside a specific range and, and, and during that period we will see the market printing those events. But if the market decides to trade higher um, and eventually threatening these, these weekly uh, resistance, we need to consider an ex one extension to the 224% um, Fibonacci and this level here. So let's say if the market rejects the, rejects the idea to print a deeper pullback from these levels, we need to consider the possibility to see dollar versus yen trading higher and eventually searching for the 224% Fibonacci extension. Actually, we have the weekly fractal nailing the, the, the golden fib above. So let's, let's take this in consideration. I believe the market can trade lower, obviously, but and based on the patterns that we have, um, but nothing assures us that that's that's what will that's what will happen. Bearish cipher at this point at seventy eight percent Fibonacci. So let me can I ask you a question about harmonics because Steve and I were we were talking mm -hmm. about looking at the yen uh, mm -hmm. yesterday that nothing seems impulsive everything seems corrective yeah and mm -hmm. it, uh does that affect say for example the hit rate when it's, a market is trading like that mm -hmm. it can because most of them and that will depend on the time frame that you that you identify uh, the pattern but the patterns there, there are two types of patterns in my point of view ones that that will start with an impulse and the ones that will finish with an impulse and let me try to 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 explain that on an empty uh, zone of my chart. Um, oh, thanks, bro. Let me just try to. I need the. Actually, I can hide my. I'm uh, I'm neutral that chart right there. Hmm, yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> basically, we have the 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 so-called M-shape formation. So the M-shape formation and the bat pattern, the Gartley pattern, the cipher pattern. They tend to be, they actually, they form, they, they are formed inside a specific range between an X point and an A point, X, A, B, C, and a D. So basically, this is an A, B, C, D pattern at the end. So, but the, but the, the pattern starts or tends to start with an impulsive momentum. Uh, basically, right. we, we expect some type of consolidation period um and at some point the market will break that structure and will in and, it, and it, it will create an impulsive momentum i'm not saying it will it, we will see um let's say 10 or 15 candles impulsive candles uh, one after another but the market needs to start this momentum needs to start with an impulsive momentum showing you a, a very specific signal so and providing you a very specific signal of a breakout yeah. of the previous structure so so and so of, you know what yeah. the trend is we know what the trend is but when it's we, impulsive we know when it's impulsive we know right we, okay we know how to identify an impulsive candle uh, after breaking a breakout of the structure usually right. will right. offer us a, 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 a white candle a bullish white candle to, to break to break the a bearish uh, uh, momentum so we have a bearish trend and uh, as soon as the market breaks that momentum it will provide us some some information uh, telling that so basically the bat pattern uh, which tends to form to be formed uh, actually it will be formed at 88 percent fibonacci so it will um, fill those expectations at least uh, it tends to retest the previous structure lows and we feel it will reject but it will reject the previous lows but it needs to be it needs to start with an impulsive momentum and it will finish with a symmetrical let's say an abcd pattern or something kind of that then we have a different kind of structure and you can use this example that i use it here so we have kind of a three wave structure a false breakout uh, a false breakout below the previous lows and I need to extend the previous swing low oops let's, let me repeat this here I use we search for an extension and an impulsive yeah. momentum 
that will uh, finish at uh, at one six hundred extension. So basically, this is the shark pattern. So basically, what we search for is kind of a consolidation period, a false breakout, and an impulsive momentum will complete the pattern. Then we trade the correction of that momentum, and the correction of the shark pattern, as I mentioned before, will offer you the bullish. Uh, five O sequence. So basically, we search for a bearish type of uh, shark pattern at one six and eight extension, and then we search for the pull. We search for that pullback to the fifty percent retracement. Usually, the market will hit will retrace to retest the previous structure resistance fifty percent fib, and we we'll buy the market expecting the market to to bounce from those levels. And eventually, the market will form if the market reacts well. From from all that sequence, eventually we will see the same sequence at the 224% Fibonacci extension. The market will fade again to the 50%, and then uh, we will see what will happen from here. Because basically, we we don't expect the market to trade higher, but we expect a retest and eventually the, the change of the the swift for for the trend. Uh, I'm sorry, all those 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 lines, but just to to get clear, just to get a simple clear uh, and clear idea. There are two different, there are two different um, harmonic patterns. The ones that will start with an impulse, and the ones that will finish with an impulse, and we and we trade the correction of that of that impulsive momentum based on two very specific Fibonacci levels. If the market fails those levels, the market will trade higher, and it will not print you a pattern with a, a decent probability to achieve the default target. So we don't have targets for patterns printed above. Based on specific ratios. What a great, yeah. what a great primer in harmonics, buddy. Yeah, that's and, and obviously we can go into deeper and, and very search for very specific criteria because it, for each one of those points and criteria, we need we need to to be able to identify those those, those specific criteria. Not just not just it's not just a visual pattern. Okay, as a, let's let's push that gold if i obviously i have those drawers here but let me just test this let me delete or hide this it, it we, we don't we don't need to measure this pattern it's here we it's a visual event we can see the left shoulder the the, the head and the right shoulder now formed and we are now approaching the next zone for so we we, we don't need the Fibonacci tool to measure the pattern. We can use a Fibonacci to measure the projection. We can use use other tools to 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 identify. Actually, we can use also the Fibonacci to to predict or to identify the eventual right shoulder formation. And because the manuals uh, will say that we have a limit of this uh, at 78 percent Fibonacci to form the, the, the right shoulder if the market decides to to trade above the the 78% Fibonacci uh, retracement usually the market will will not form and will not give sequence to the pattern so we have our limits also for that pattern but basically it's a visual pattern one harmonic pattern can be what 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 I consider to be one let's say a shark pattern eventually some of some some people will consider it as a butterfly pattern and that's completely different interpretations for for both one as I said before one of them tends to start with an impulsive momentum and the other one tends to start with a with a with a inside a, of a correction and and will will finish with with an impulsive momentum um, so. Uh, not do, do, just to say that those are not so do, those are not visual events um, um those those patterns will need confirmation and validation through uh, the fibonacci uh, tool and the fibonacci criteria uh, basically let's use another example this is dollar versus CAD, uh, which which in, we need to wait for what the market will do here. So we have this kind of, uh, uh, we are inside a sideways moving process. This is the 12 hour time frame chart. Um, we can see these as, a, uh, let's say a cup and handle. We are we're still building the, the, the handle at this point. Um, we, we, we can see a breakout of, I can see a breakout of this smaller structure, a lower degree structure and a retest of this, uh, the weekly fractal above. Um, 
a breakout above and, and, and eventually this megaphone formation, who knows what the market will, will offer me from here. And the reason why I prefer to identify those, those swings and because they, they offer me a specific price for a completion point. And if the market gets completed, I know what to do. I know where the invalidation point is and I know where my default targets uh, are too. So I don't, I just need those two factors but I need to validate this pattern. And some of you will say, okay, this is the default bullish back pattern. Andre is trying to project one default um, back pattern and he needs to search for the 88% Fibonacci retracement here. So this is my trigger. This is my, my validation of the pattern, the 88% Fibonacci retracement, but this is not, the level that I will search for. And the level that, that I will search for is the 127 extension because this is not a bearish or a bullish, or, or I'm not projecting, let's say, I'm not projecting a bullish bat. I'm projecting the bullish Gartley pattern. And at, in this example, we see the 127 extension positioned right above the 88% Fibonacci retracement, as I mentioned before. So there's confluence between those two patterns, but sometimes it will not be so perfect. Um, and the reason what criteria will change between um, one potential bad pattern or the, the, the Gartley pattern, it's 127 extension. So what, first of all, what is the 127 extension is the is one extension of this first swing. So this first swing, a retracement, and then the 127 extension from this first swing that will form the Gartley pattern. Why? Because the market has found support at the golden field here. So this is the, 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 the 618 retracement from these highs. The market has found support at the golden field. And then if you see, the market has found also resistance at the golden field. And this is pure math. 127 extension, uh, 618 retracement plus 618 retracement, you'll see the 127 pullback. It makes sense in terms of math. Okay, the golden field versus another golden field. If the market violates this previous short term, you need to wait for that to happen. I'm just projecting one non-event at this point. Um, but that is the pattern that I will search for. As a, again, and reinforcing this, sometimes this confluence or this convergence between the 127 and the 88% Fibonacci is not so perfect. And we tend to search for perfect confluence between the 127 extension and the 78% Fibonacci retracement. If the market offers you that perfect confluence between those FIBs, it will, it will, um, it tends to act very well from, from those levels. At this point, we just need to wait and to validate those, those patterns. At this point, um, well, I have no no setup at this point unless unless I want to get involved in a, in a breakout of the structure above or a breakout of the previous lows or a small or small or a, or a short term event if I want to fade this 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 momentum here. Um, then another one that I want to show you and and I want to check also what's happening at, at, at this point with S&P. I know that you have also, uh, you are interested on those, on, on those, um, on a short side, uh, Dale, I'm sorry. Yeah. Are you on a, on a short side for, yeah. for S&P? Yeah. Um, You're looking for 3011 was... first, huh? Uh, not first. I don't know what will happen. I, I know if that happens, I know what to do. I, I don't yeah. know if the market will, will trade there. I'm actually, we are facing a, a bearish shark. We are approaching a bearish shark territory. The one six connect extension that this pattern is, as it's, it's not printed yet. Okay. The market has nailed it. I, as approached that Fibonacci extension, not printed yet. Nothing assures me the market will nail and fail from this from this uh, golden Fibonacci extension. 
which is nothing more than an extension from the first swing low extended above first level for the shark after the false breakout and i can't get tired to 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 share these among among people false breakout extend the, the last swing low extend it to the 168 extension as soon as the market goes that level we will find some pressure for sure we never know what the proportion of of, of the, the of the next swing obviously but the market stands tends to offer some pressure at those levels the market has offered some pressure as soon as, as it approaches this the, the fibonacci but the pattern it's not completed yet and as always the the shark patterns can also extend to the 224 percent fibonacci actually not this one this one and that will put uh, the price trading into inside a box um, of confluence, let's say, or convergence between another bearish shark pattern at 224 extension and the crab pattern at 161 extension. So this is one first swing, the pullback, uh, retest of the previous low, let's say, the golden fib pullback here, or 78% fib. And I, but I need this swing to be an impulsive momentum above this structure. So I need the price here at some point, I need a clear impulsive momentum to complete that pattern above. Uh, if the market fails that, even though we are, we are not facing the same. Well, uh, wouldn't you say, deal. Andre, Andre, mm -hmm. wouldn't you say the last impulsive move was the decline that we had from the, on the 24th? This one, this one, the, the, I'm, well, I'm, yeah, the one sixty nine extension that I'm searching for. This level. Uh, it looks like is, it started at twelve o'clock on the twenty fourth and went straight down in five candles from the uh, three oh eight level, thirty oh eight level. Go to your left. Uh, go to your le left. Okay, go to your left. Uh, okay, yes. okay, that mm -hmm. that that this decline. one. That this decline. Yeah, uh, those, that you... one. That decline. Yeah, this, that looks impulsive, this... didn't it? That looks impulsive. That looks impulsive for sure. Yeah. This looks impulsive. That's what I'm saying, that one. No. I mean, that looks it, I, I kind of judge what's impulsive by the acceleration guess, of how quickly yeah, it so, gets from point A to B. Yes, yes, yes. It can, it can, it, it can, no, no, not it can, it is an impulsive momentum for sure. No. Okay. That's the only impulsive uh, wave I yeah, see but, on your charts. We have a few others previously. Uh, most are to the downside. And, and, and lower, most are to the downside, but that doesn't invalidate the possibility to form uh, patterns against that, yeah. that the most recent momentum. Actually, we I'm just talking my book, man. Yeah, that's no, but, but, that, but that's, that's, that's correct interpretation. It's, it's right. So, but we can see this, this bullish sharp pattern printed at one six on extension. And sometimes we will not, uh, sometimes you, the market will fill those criteria. And I'm talking about Fibonacci criteria between the point X, A, B, uh, C, and D. Um, yeah. And sometimes they are not so so specific in terms of impulsive momentum and, and, and corrective structures. And we need to be, to pay attention to those, to those swings. Um, okay. Yeah. Great presentation. Um, I don't, for okay it's 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 our time now uh, uh, we don't have an interview today no i mean if you oh, want to keep okay. going go ahead no no just just to finish I, I can't remember which one it was um dixie let me check here actually i have a few of them but we don't have time for for those today let me check these on a um, 12 hours time frame uh yeah we are now uh, well it's the same same story patterns and more patterns and projections and more projections we have an edge in shoulders here on dixie yeah i can see this as, a, as an inverted edge in shoulders and we are now appro not approaching and we, we, we are we need we need new highs on, on dollar index to 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 achieve and to achieve those default targets um yeah. one six and eight extension this is what it what this is this is 9986 and then the one that I shared before for our subscribers, the one at uh, the major one, a 168 extension, actually at 111. 
So this is the major um, okay. important the major, zone coming up. Correct. Yeah, the important zone. Um, as I mentioned before, I was seeing this as an ascending wedge. As soon as the market starts to bounce from this level, I started. We can we can start to identify those those structure trend lines, support and resistance. And I was starting to identify this as a potential wedge, uh, shending wedge. And for that to happen, I need to see a retest at least a third time of those eyes, um, and eventually the formation of uh, one of those patterns above, feeling some pressure there. Um, dollar versus Mexican peso. I have a note here for a two hours time frame shark pattern exactly. Um, dollar versus Mexican peso. I call your attention for, or at least for those who are here, um, I call your attention for the shape of this momentum here, because this can can end up uh, retesting the highs. Obviously, it's too soon to predict uh, the eventual cup and handle, but this shape here is so familiar for those type of patterns. We have the 168 extension printed right at the, th actually the market has nailed the 38% retracement already from those highs. So we have the Mexican Pedro rejecting the 38% FIB. Um, this is also the uh, a few points below the 168 extension in the first level for the shark. So this is um, the 168 extension reversal or potential reversal Fibonacci extension. If the market fails there, we have also a second option at 224% Fibonacci. I'm not saying those will offer you the best risk reward approach. Attention to a uh, retest of those highs. Golden fee position at above, so I will not ignore also. I never ignore a golden Fibonacci uh, above. Um, and um, let me check this on a daily because as, as I published it before, and let me actually, let me push this from our platform because I believe I get a clear picture here for our viewers, dollar versus Mexican peso. Okay, this was the chart that I published for our subscribers and the market at that point, the market was reinforcing this daily support. So we are now, we are already trading above this Fibonacci zone. So the, the my, let's say the default 38% uh, Fibonacci retracement, we are already, we are printing one eventual right shoulder um, for one pattern that's, that will, if the pattern breaks below this daily support at 1935, I believe the market will search for, well, two different zones. First of all, the first, one ascending structure trend line covering those lows, and the market may suffer some pressure there. And we have the 78% Fibonacci in 1907, the bullish cipher pattern. So this is the level where I will search for longs if dollar Mexican peso starts to approach that level. If the market decides to break this structure and eventually the weekly fractal, um, well, that it, it, will, it tends to search for the next fractal. We have a monthly fractal below, and we have projected um, the projections, let's say the default projections for the edge and shoulders at 18.59. So basically, this is what we can expect from, from here. But without ignoring, as I was uh, mentioning before, without ignoring this shape, without ignoring those shark patterns that tends to offer you later a bullish opportunity at 50% Fibonacci. So if the market decides to print that, that shark pattern at 224% uh, Fibonacci extension, we may see the price pulling back to the 50% Fib and then offering you another opportunity to go long. So this is not a reversal pattern. Okay, We expect some consolidation for false breakout extension pullback and the new trend continuation is very similar uh, and people tend to confuse uh, an ABCD pattern. So what is an ABCD pattern? The ABCD pattern tends to offer you a short opportunity. We tend to search for the 38% FIB, but then the market needs to keep trading 
higher because it's an ABCD pattern. It's not an ABC correction. It's not a, a three wave structure. Uh, and we expect the market to, to keep trading in the direction of the major trends. No, it's an ABCD pattern. It tends to reverse after the pullback. And it, needs to re it tends to reverse the previous major trends. So if you see an ABCD pattern, and you need to understand how to validate the ABCD pattern. And I use the existence of divergence or not to identify those, those, those ABCD patterns the, or the difference between an ABC correction or an ABCD pattern. And one of them, we have an impulsive momentum, obviously. Um, but we need time to explain those, the, all those, all those patterns. And I believe we will, we will share some, some, some educational content um, in the future in our platform, in our, for our, for our subscribers and for our viewers. So stay tuned um, to that content also. And Dale, just to finish, um, just to finish, I, I, I want to, to alert all those who, who, who still here that time is running out and to subscribe our services and 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 i believe it's a, a very interesting opportunity um and and there there's always uh, people that that thinks that we we don't need to spend money to to learn how to trade and it is a very uh, in my opinion it's, it's a mistake we need to spend money if you don't spend money directly uh, to someone to teach you or to someone to guide you or to someone to, to, to mentor you. You'll, you'll pay spend, the market. You'll pay the market. You'll pay the, your time to, to, to learn. You'll pay, you'll pay in other, in other um, ways for sure. So don't create that stigma about, oh, I don't want to pay to, to learn. Or don't, I don't want to pay to... Man, you, you, you are paying to be surrounded with some of the best traders on the planet. So why not to pay a few bucks to a few bucks to, to be here? So you will be a different. You will feel the difference after a while, and not if not in in your wallet, at least in your wisdom, and that is crucial. And I believe education education is 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 the pillar of the the, the of the society. I believe tremendously in, in, in the education of our um, kids and, and teenagers. I, 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 I'm an education um, apologist and, and, and well, I believe it's, it, it makes part of the process to trade the market. You need to learn and, and, and you need to spend money to learn. Um, and that's, that's my quote for today. How about this, Andre? You can't yeah. learn you can't learn experience, but you can learn from the experience. From experience, absolutely. You and like for that the, one? Uh, of, of course, I like it. It's not the first time that you mention it, and and I, I truly agree. And 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 specifically because I'm 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 blessed because I work with you on a daily basis, and you have a lot of experience on inside the market. No one's talk about the Dale Pinkett, uh, but in, in that perspective, but. The, you you have the full picture of the market for twenty five or more years. I'm I'm not incorrect. No deal. Uh, can you? Okay, I'll take. I'll go with that number. No, no, it's not twenty five. I, I believe it's more. No, uh, <laughs> I believe twenty five's <laughs> enough, bro. All right, go go. Twenty five. I believe it's enough for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but 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 that that pays your investment on forex analytics for sure. Just be surrounded with 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 Dale and and Blake and Steve and and Stelius and 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 I, I don't want to talk about Amanda and and, and Polly because everyone talks about them and they are actually amazing scalpers inside the market. I don't do yeah. as, as a scalper. So I, I'm, I'm, I can't get it's, so, so familiar it, with, the, with them. It's a heck of a team, man. Best, it's a heck you know, of a team. So man. I've been and, around 25 years, yeah, right? Man. According to you, <laughs> best team, best team I've ever been part of. I'm not ever. sure if I, if I, if I, if I committed a, a huge mistake here. No, no I, it was a compliment. How many? Okay? How, how many? How many? But just, it was a, how many? you know, it was a. <laughs> 35. <laughs> Stop. Anyway, uh, <laughs> don't just count your years, your, count your blessings. Your blessings. For sure, and for and sure. thank you so much, Andre. I'm going to oh, tell Bellu you. to have a little tagline on this uh, today's webinar because you not only shared your views, but you did some teaching about harmonics here. So I want people to see it. 
<clears throat> have a great weekend, buddy. And uh, thank you, very everyone. Much. It's, it's you know, it's a concept, Dale. I'm sorry to interrupt you one last time. It's a concept. I believe it's a routine process that I believe people needs to embrace. If not on harmonic trading, any other type of trading that you prefer, but you need a routine process to identify, to measure, to 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 calculate your risks and 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 to repeat on a daily basis and be be sure that you are here tomorrow. And for that, you need to be very disciplined in managing your, your risk and managing your, your trades. And, and be sure to be here tomorrow. It's, it's crucial. Yeah. Okay, Thank Andre. Have, all right. Have a great weekend, buddy. Enjoy. You too. Thank you very much. Smell the roses, and we'll see everyone to, on Monday. Adios. Remember, don't just count your pips. Count your blessings. And uh, we hope that we've added value to what you were attempting to accomplish this week. We'll kill them next week, too.